So I'm with Rick Riding, a pastor from Sukkot Halel here in Jerusalem, and we're talking about uh, this week about the situation that's been developing in Egypt and how it affects Israel and the Palestinian territories. So Rick, how is all this going to affect Israel? I think we need to realize that uh, Israel is already very much uh, hemmed in, in a way, and uh, they have had uh, been able, since the peace treaty with Egypt, have been able to really direct most of their attention to the border uh, with Lebanon, the border with Gaza, uh, a slight amount on the border with Jordan, but not needing to do much militarily to protect themselves on the border with Egypt. And uh, does this actually affect the Palestinians as well? In the last week, I know I was in Bethlehem, and it seemed as though everybody was glued to the radio and to the television, so is it going to affect them too? Oh, I think it does affect them very much. I, it's, a, it's causing a great uncertainty in the whole Arab world, uh, especially wherever there has been a hold on to power uh, and yet are not, not really taking care of the needs of the people. Uh, there should be reason for, for alarm. And uh, I saw today even that uh, 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 Abbas, for example, had taken out Jordanian citizenship, which he's been making a big deal out of that Palestinians should not do that. To, but it's like he's in a, in a, in a mode of fear, and so he's doing it even for himself. And, and so and, uh, there, there actually is a, a youth movement that has come out in the last two days against Hamas in Gaza, which is really phenomenal because they've had an iron stronghold on Gaza. And for a, a big Facebook movement with thousands of young people to suddenly come on there and say, we're tired of the dictatorial ways from, from Hamas, uh, I'm sure puts them in a position of, of at the same time, I'm sure they're hoping that Egypt will fall to radical Islam and strengthen Hamas, but at the same time, if it doesn't go in the direction of radical Islam in Egypt, then it makes them more fearful in, in Gaza, for example, that, that they will, that Hamas, that the radical Islam could lose power there. So this whole thing can go in a lot, in different directions in, in many different countries. So the whole Arab world really is rebelling against dictatorship. Yes, they are. Um, but the thing is that some are better at putting it down than others. Uh, some things started in Syria and they quickly put it down. Some things started in Iran and they quickly put it down. But it gives hope when they see the scope of what's happening in Egypt. I think it gives hope to the people that, that uh, there could be a, a sudden development that would allow them uh, to to challenge uh, their government. But the the... the uh, thing that is scary for all of us is the in the natural is the fact that it could go in one of two directions. It could go uh, toward a very strong Islamic militant control. Uh, those of us from Western nations are are just naively thinking that democracy will automatically mean uh, a, a, a freedom within a country. But a vote, we need to realize in many of these countries, for instance, in Egypt, 80% of the people are illiterate. They are often very, very influenced by people like the Islamic Brotherhood who, who do a lot of social projects and then out of that promote a radical Islamic agenda. So even as in Iran, uh, when the Shah was being shaken, uh, there were a lot of uh, people concerned about uh, Ayatollah Khomeini and others, and then certain Western leaders stood up and said, no, we can include them, they're safe, they've reassured us they're not trying to take over, they're not running for the main office. And, and then after uh, a moderate was put into the main office in Iran, within months he was dumped by the, uh, by the strong religious Islamic militants, and they took over, as we know, and, and since then there's no more freedom again. Now, Israel must be worried about this. Are they actually strengthening their borders down in Egypt? Yes, uh, there's, a, there's very great concern in Israeli military. They, are, uh, they realize as well that many uh, Hamas and Hezbollah operatives who had been put in prison by Egypt have escaped during this time. Uh, people, uh, radical Islamic people went into the prisons and broke in and opened up and let them loose. And so Israel's very concerned about their southern border and is trying to beef that up, but they're a very small country and, and it's really stretching their resources, people-wise, in terms of manpower to, to take care of their borders. It's a large, very porous border with Egypt because of the desert. Now, Hosni Mubarak has been there for about 30 years. Is there actually anybody to take over if he loses power? The problem is that he has, he has not done a good job at, at sharing uh, power and, and training anyone. So uh, 
most of the people who are around him are considered very corrupt and and i don't i don't think would be acceptable to the people of egypt who are fed up with uh, a, a very uh, strong uh, hand that has been run there that's brought stability but at the same time has been very corrupt and those around mubarak and mubarak have become very very wealthy some estimates into even his personal wealth going to the you know as possible as 40 50 billion dollars and and so i don't think that people will accept anyone who is very close to him uh so then that that leaves a, a real void uh, there, their their names, of course, being put forth. But people like Baraday, he's been out of the country most of the time in the last 13 years, and he does not have a strong power base within the country to hold on to power, even if he, if he, for example, would get into power. Now there is a, a peace deal between Israel and Egypt. Do you think Israelis do like to travel to Egypt? Do you think this is going to change in the future? Well, in in uh, in recent years, uh, Israelis love to go on vacation to Israel, especially in the Sinai, and it's brought a lot of income to Egypt. Uh, but every time there's there's a certain uh, kind of uh, terror movement rising up again, they begin to target. A, there was a hotel blown up, for example, in Taba, right across the border, where into Egypt, where a lot of Israelis went on vacations. So. Uh, right now, obviously, I don't think Israelis would feel <laughs> at all safe to go to Egypt, and uh, and but their their main concern is just the overall uh, peace that was signed with Egypt. Uh, if the Islamic Brotherhood comes into control, they have said very clearly that they do not feel like that uh, that agreement was made by them, and they, they they would one of the first things they have said they would do would be to rescind the peace agreement with Israel. So if radical Islam actually does take power, we will see the, the peace deal destroyed? I think we'll see more than the peace deal destroyed. I think we'll see peace destroyed very soon. Uh, I, this is a very volatile situation. And if uh, Egypt were to really go uh, into the hands of the Islamic Brotherhood, they would join together with Ahmadinejad and the others from Iran, and you would have on two sides of of the uh, the countries that are more stable now, such as Saudi Arabia and Jordan, I think you would find them toppled very soon. And then you would have Israel closed in on every single side by radical Islamic uh, regimes that are committed in their charters to the destruction of Israel. So are citizens on the street worried and are the soldiers worried? They, they have to fight the war if it comes to this? I think... Um, most of the people here have grown up with war after war after war, so I, I don't know if I'd use the word extremely worried as much as uneasy, uh, realizing that, that this could very quickly go into a, a direction that would, would be very dangerous for Israel again. Uh, and yet at the same time, uh, Israelis have an amazing ability to just go on with life as usual. They realize that, that, that part of the uh, the ways in which radical Islam works is through intimidation and fear uh, and deception, and they realize it's very important to not allow that intimidation to paralyze them. Now, it seems at the moment that something is really happening in the Arab world at this particular time. Do you see this as significant? And are we being drawn into the end times quite rapidly? I believe it is very, very, very significant. We're at a moment uh, in history that is hugely transitional. I believe intercession and prayer by Christians is very, very important at this moment. We personally uh, feel there has been a window of mercy open over the Middle East, and we've been praying that God would raise up, according to Isaiah 19, uh, uh, someone who would be a type of a deliverer, a prototype of Jesus eventually delivering Egypt, but at this time, someone who would be like a Joseph. And we've been praying that someone would be raised up. We know there are people further down in the army who are not stained by corruption and yet have the uh, power base and the knowledge to help lead the country into a democratic expression without uh, giving in to the agendas of the Islamic Brotherhood. So we've been praying very much that God would raise up this kind of a Joseph. If this would happen in Egypt, uh, 
then it will put everything on hold, I believe, in the whole Arab world. And I believe it could give a window of mercy in the sense that there's a spreading movement. We're seeing many, many houses of prayer being planted all across the Middle East right now. We're hearing of a of tremendous move of God among young people and children in Egypt right now. Hundreds and hundreds of prayer groups and prayer cells in Egypt. We've been helping our, ourselves and starting a house of prayer at Alexandria. That Something is really awakening spiritually there right now. And I personally uh, am praying that this window of mercy will stay open long enough that that many, many more Muslims could come to know Jesus and that the Christians could be really strengthened in in the word, in faith, in prayer, in their relationship to be able to handle an even more extreme shaking that will happen at any time that some someone like the Islamic Brotherhood would get into place. I do believe, according to end time events, uh, there is a time where that will happen. We may be in that time, and it could happen very, very quickly that we could see country after country falling in major regional and even world war. Or we may see uh, that, the, that, that it's almost like Satan is trying to push something ahead of its timing, and that in answer to cries of intercession, that God would hold open a, a window of mercy for a period of time uh, for what is happening in most of the Middle Eastern countries right now to spread more quickly of people that are really coming to know Jesus. We're hearing increased reports. Our people in our house of prayer in Alexandria said they're hearing of more and more people having visions, dreams, visitations, just supernaturally uh, seeing who Jesus is. So it's an amazing time in many, many ways. And I think we, we, we could see uh, both very bad things and very good things happening simultaneously in the Middle East. What reports are you getting about the streets in Alexandra from the House of Prayer? Uh, what they have been amazed at is that uh, what began to uh, turn in a very violent way, as many of the Christians rose up and instead of staying in their homes in fear like they'd been doing, as the Christians began going out on the streets, praying, gathering together, praying, uh, they felt something shift there. And it also did in Cairo. You remember there were a couple of days with huge violence, and then it suddenly really died down. And and uh, in, soon after it died down, uh, which was uh, this last Sunday, there were actually a large group of evangelical Christians who came out in the hundreds on Tahrir Square, sang songs about Jesus, openly testified about Jesus, and were not uh, uh, attacked, Or which was an amazing thing. That just hasn't happened in Egypt in, in modern times. So uh, there is, uh, how can I say, there, there, there's been a shifting uh, from a very violent situation that could have gone much worse, much very, very quickly. And I think a group like the Muslim Brotherhood could have profited from that to jump into control. Uh, or the government could have come with a great repression that would have resulted in more violence. Uh, and, and, and yet somehow something suddenly shifted and, 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 and the demonstrations were peaceful again. So I really do believe Christians need to realize their prayers play a great role in what's happening in these kinds of situations. So what's your prayer finally for Israel and for Egypt? Our prayer for Israel and for Egypt right now is that God would continue to hold open this window of mercy. We've seen a time where where large numbers of young people are coming to know the Lord, uh, uh, it, both in Israel and in Egypt, where uh, something is beginning to crumble and break of the Islamic ability to hold back their people from receiving information. So even just as this whole revolution in Egypt was very stirred up by things like Facebook and Twitter, they could also find on the Facebook and Twitter and other places links to help them find out about Jesus if they've had a dream or a vision of him and they're trying to find out about him. So my prayer is that there would be a window of mercy and that large, large numbers of people would would really come to know Jesus, those who are hungry and seeking for him, uh, and that in the meantime, that God, that during that time, that God would raise up a, a type of Joseph in Israel and wise leadership in Israel, in Israel uh, so that both in Egypt and in Israel, that there would be leadership that could keep the peace between these two countries that are so key to the whole region. Um, and and that uh, and that the whole body of Christ here could be much stronger and ready when the dominoes finally do start really falling rapidly and we're rapidly thrown into something that would result in regional conflict. Okay, Rick. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Great to be with you, Paul.